Uh, Josh Green here for Tungsten Tales with Kai Fan Lung joining us from Liverpool. Um, Kai, you've had a year on the tour, near well, over a year on the tour now. It must be a, a dream. How, how are you finding it? Um, yeah, it's a dream, but it's COVID time as well. So I can say I'm, I'm lucky or I'm unlucky. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoy, I really enjoy it, to be honest, uh, to play with the best in the world. You know, that's everybody's dreams. So for me, it's a very good opportunity and to, 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 to get my next chapter of Dart's life. Yeah. And I think people will be interested to know how you got into darts. It's a it's an obvious question, really. But how yeah, yeah. how did you get into darts in in Hong Kong? Um, I think it's from my colleagues. Uh, okay. A little bit of push from my colleague. They basically, you know, there are a lot of soft team machine in Hong Kong in mm. a lot of bars. Uh, it's been very popular uh, for the last ten years. So I I still remember I hit my first uh, use my soft tape. Uh, to play was in 2013 in May. So mm -hmm. I hit a hat trick on the soft tip. That's that's found, oh, it's, it's interesting then. So I carry on playing and I joined the league, local league in Hong Kong, just everybody does. And then because there's a lot of uh, opportunity to go overseas to play soft tip and represent your country or city. So I really, e really eagerly, you know, try to represent. So I play a lot of qualifying tournaments. So that's how I, started the soft tips and the first time i think i played the steel team was back in 2014 january so mm -hmm. so there are a lot of uh, tournaments in hong kong both in steel tip leagues and soft tip leagues so i participate both of them so that's how it started yeah we know that the soft tip game is a big part of, of asian darts as well is it is it yeah. difficult to find steel tip boards and competition sometimes or I think for Hong Kong, it's there's the, the, the good way that why there are some popular names that always come to UK to play steel tip because in Hong Kong, we were once British colony before 1997. So, and the Dart Association for steel tip had 40 years plus of history. Mm -hmm. So they run a lot of leagues and a lot of tournaments and we are a part of the WDF as well. So they sent teams to overseas for Asia Pacific Cup and World Cup. So uh, that's why it, that we got some advantage in Hong Kong for steel tip. That's why you see a lot of big names like Royden, Scott McKenzie come from Hong Kong. You know that that's that's how it goes. Uh, but in the meantime, of course, the soft tip plays a very important role in in Asia or Hong Kong because that's why we start playing you know if you just put a steel tip board in the bar or in a in a cafe probably nobody would touch it but if there's an electronic machine people find oh that's interesting that's got animations got all the movie screens that keeps people you know found interesting to play and then that's why we got like thirty thousand people playing in the league wow. like on and off in hong kong we got eight million of people in hong, uh citizen in, in in hong kong so but you know, every week there is thirty thousand people you know, playing, playing darts, wow. which is a brilliant thing. Yeah. Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah, That's incredible. Yeah. Um, and now uh, it evolved for about ten years already for soft tip in Hong Kong, and it's getting popular. It's not in the bars. It's we got dojo as well. Just mm. like there's no, it's just like cafe. You know, just people playing in a dojo. Uh, and now we're getting into dart into the school as well. Before before I came to UK, I was coach a darts coach in two secondary schools in uh, Hong Kong. So now I reckon it's like fifty schools have darts lessons in their extracurricular activities in Hong Kong, which is a brilliant thing. You know, the the, the schools are accepted acceptable with these sports, which is a brilliant thing for the future. Yeah, it sounds like the the culture in Hong Kong is a little bit different to what it here is here in the UK because we don't really see darts being sort of in a school curriculum here in the UK. But yeah. if they if they oh, put no. that over in Hong Kong, you you're going to have some very good young players in 10, 20 years time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, 
just moving on, um, the Asian tour played a, a part of your development and was part of your reasoning, I, I'm sure, for, for moving over here. I mean, how how is that looking now? I mean, how much talent is there on the Asian tour currently? Um, of course, in Asia, we all, you know, we always know those popular names like Paul Lane, Royden, uh, Lawrence Lagan, you know, yeah. and a lot of uh, different nationalities, you know, in Asia. I mean, that is a brilliant thing for Asian too, you know, uh, when they start in 2000, back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So there were like five or six uh, stages in a total of like 10 to 12 games uh, in a year, which is not a lot, but when you, when you go there, you want to win because that's a chance to get into the World Cup plus the World Championship. So everybody look at it. So that is the hope, you know, to get your darts uh, stage mm -hmm. moving forward, right? Yeah. So for me, I, I didn't, I keep playing, although I never win one in the Asian Tour. I think I came second once mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in Korea uh, back in 2019. Um, but there's a good experience because the set setup and everything is according to PTC, you know, stand, uh, kind of standards. So you, you see like Noel, Malikin, Lawrence Ilagan hit nine dart in the game, you know. So you can when you play with them, you, you gain experience. So and they take that experience to another level. So so which is a good thing, it's a brilliant thing, you know, to get more daughters, you know, to 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 use that route to to get into the uh, world championship or, or 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 to get better your darts yeah experience and you of course came over and based yourself in the uk just over a year ago that must yeah, have been yeah. a, a very very big decision for you and obviously uh mark your your manager told me that your family are hopefully yeah. moving over here soon so yeah it looks, it looks like yeah. we're uh you're stuck over here doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, since I, I think I still remember the moment that I've got a tour card. Then Dalton asked me whether you were space or station or would you play in the pro tour because yeah. I reckon there are a few Asian players who got a tour card before didn't participate at all. It came to my head. I need to. I need to play because I quit my job. You know, to hundred percent, fully dedicated in the sports. That's what I want to do. You know. Even if I don't win a game, even if I don't even win a leg, I still need to commit. So to 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 make it happen, you know, to to play with the 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 the, the, the biggest names in the world, you know, to see how far I can go. Uh, but uh, luckily, I've got my cousins live in Liverpool. Yeah. So I've got a base as well. Try to get my uh, relief, a little bit of relief, you know, because the cost is very high, you know, to. Mm -hmm. To, if you rent a place or if you live your own, or on your own, it's very hard. But I've got my cousins who lived in Liverpool for like 10 plus or 20 years already. So huh. is so uh, automatically in my head, okay, I'm going to fully committed in it. But at that time, I think, my, uh, of course, my family didn't know what I want to do as well because it's very hard. I've got my four-year-old daughter now so and my, my wife as well. So it's very hard not to see them. Uh, but the first three months last year was brilliant, I think, uh, because the week-in, week-out tournaments and occasionally I can play some league in here in UK, so which gave me a lot of, you know, uh, carry on. The, the, the progress was okay, but after the COVID, I back to Hong Kong, then coming back in the summer series last year. But then you got two months uh, lag time again for the autumn series. So it's very hard after the COVID, you know, everything's changed. There's no week-in, week-out. So, what are you going to do in the house for two months time without nothing and without your family? That's really hard, but that's a learning progress as well. Right. So that's why I'm saying I've, I'm so lucky as to get a two car, but on the other side, I'm so unlucky where, while the COVID hit. But then uh, my wife told me, oh, I still lucky because, you know, in Asia, there's no tournament at all. I can't even play any tournament in Asia. So, 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 um, yeah, so that's how it goes. Yeah, and you, you talk about when you got your tour card and you, you spoke to Dan. Before, you, before you'd before you got the tour card, were you thinking that I, I'm going to be moving over to the UK or was it a case of as soon as you got it, that's when the decision came? Yeah, the, the, the later one came because uh, 
since after I got to Tuka, of course, I'm going to stay. Uh, if I couldn't got the two, couldn't get a Tuka, probably I'm not that keen, you know, to 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 stay in UK because I got my family here. Of course, I see some players from overseas, you know, uh, like Damon Hatter. He, he came like in 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 October or November before before uh, in 2019. Yeah, and some players, yeah. I think some other players as well. You know, they, they, they're moving over before or even after. Like some people will keep committing. You know, playing. But then I've now I've got a brave move now. You know, uh, of course for, for the time being, I, currently I still have the two card. What if I lose my two card? But I'm not. I'm thinking I, I'm I'm going to keep on doing it here. You know, just focus, uh, carry on. You know. I I will definitely committed here, you know, to 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 give hundred percent to to see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And how would you assess your your first year on tour? Because it looked from an outsider that you were playing some absolutely brilliant darts, but maybe not quite getting the results that you deserved throughout last year. Yeah, I think the consistency is the problem. As I said, mm. uh, I was brilliant in the first three months. I think. After I joined the tour, after I joined the tour, of course, I still remember the first game I played in the tour. I lost to AD, Adrian Lewis, uh, six nil. But then the other day I win six nil or six one straight away with a hundred average. So mm-hmm. which means you're not giving up. You, you keep focusing and then just carry on doing it. Uh, but then because of the COVID, then I lost a bit of confidence or or you know the game game on. Uh, mentality so that's why your mentality drag a little bit so uh, and particular loss I can't uh, uh, fail to uh, proceed to the players champ final and uh, miss like maybe a win just 250 grand to get into the world championship that really a low for me at the time but you know it happened it happens but I'm glad this year that I think Mark Dane, my, my manager now, you know, I think he spotted uh, uh, the game that I won Peter Wright last year uh, in the Pro Tour. He averaged 107, I averaged 106. I think he spotted that 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 moment that oh this this kid got got some game, you know, and and he spotted it. So he gave me a lot of you know confidence now when I go to game. Particularly, I signed him this year, so. You need somebody to back you up. Uh, it's very hard because I'm the only Asian in the in the in the in the venue. Of course, everybody is fine. I mean, I'm a good friend with Stephen Bunting. Practice with him a lot. Gave me a lot of you know things in the head. You know, the kidney on the on the on the high. Uh, but still, you need somebody really really want you to win. Then you need the responsibility to win as well. So now I'm I'm. I'm I really keep focus during the game, on and off, you know, the game. And we, it's a good thing uh, for me. And you talk about having your manager and you, you previously said, obviously, your family are, are moving over. How important is it for you to have the right people around you and a positive influence? Yeah, because I never set any goals or targets in or any thoughts. Because I, I even I've got a two car, I still think, Am I that professional? You know, <laughs> yeah, you still think, no, you're still amateur, you know, because you're new to this game. I'm not playing most people like they play in the young ages. I only started playing like 2000, seriously, 2000. I started playing casual darts 2013, but I play serious darts maybe like 2017. So I only, this short period of time didn't give you a lot of confidence because whether I can do it or not. It's like stepping stones. You're just crossing the stone, stepping on the stone, whether it's a trial and error. But but if you've got somebody believing you, then you've you you've got confidence in your in your in your mind as well. Then oh, I believe I'm a professional. I I should be professional, you know. Even even I win or lose, you know, you still have that in your mind. So which 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 gives me a lot of uh, confidence now, particular. With a new manager, particularly, and my family moving over, so which means you got more responsibility, and you really you need to do something, you know, uh, try to push a little bit 
uh, forward, you know, instead of just if I win, I win, if I lose, I lose. Just, you know, the, the, the yeah. mentality is different now. So I'm looking forward to it, you know, for the next pro tour or, or any tournaments. And you mentioned, obviously, it was a disappointment not getting to the Worlds after one year with your tour card, but there's an opportunity this year to get there once again. I'm sure that will be a, a big goal of yours to get to the World Championship. Yeah. So this year, at least, you know, the point system, you, you get more about the point system as well. Because last year I was like, if you win a game, if you win a match and then you got more money, but you never calculate about uh, how far I need to do to reach that goal, you know. Mm -hmm. But this year, because based on last year experience, then you know, oh, you need to set a target, you know, how, how, how would you achieve that goal to get into like the players' champ final or world champ finals, you know. I mean, this uh, is, uh, I think it's very important, you know, based on last year experience. Of course, you have to perform as well. I'm not saying it's, it's very easy, but at least you have a clear mindset of uh, goals on how, how to tackle it. Yeah, and the World Championship, of course, is so top-heavy, as we say, with the money. If you make it to the World Championship, that can be, for some players, a yeah, third, changing, like, even half of their earnings for the year getting to the World Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, if you get there, you've got more than a good chance of, of keeping your card and, and then exactly, having more, yeah. more chances on the Pro Tour. Yeah, so what I need to do is like is keep focus on the Pro to winning more on the or gaining more experience winning more on the floor to four four tournaments and then to get that ticket to the uh to the end of the year well we hope we see you there we uh, we definitely yeah. got our fingers crossed there yeah. but thank you very much for your time and uh i'm sure we'll catch up again soon thanks josh cheers